Okay, we are now recording the Chaos Evolution Working Group meeting on October 27, 2019. Welcome, everyone. Hey, Sean. Hey. Um, I guess I got to change my my camera because you're looking at my closed laptop. Right now. <laughs> uh, not really exciting. There we go. There we go. All right. Should we go ahead and get started? I think so. All right. Uh, Sean, can you see the meeting minutes in the chat? Should we post them again? Yeah, uh, you'd have to post them again because I joined later. All right. Oh, to, there you go. To, to Zoom fly. Yep. I think Eric just posted them for you. All right. So uh, I've got a couple of things. I put a couple of things on the agenda I'd like to go through. So at the last call, we talked about um, moving all of the previously defined metrics over to their new focus areas, as well as updating the metric template with the one that uh, Matt G posted as well. We, we discussed a little bit about that. Um, so after the call last week, I opened uh, pull request number uh, 245, I believe it is, or 246, sorry, um, which adds the release metrics to the new focus areas that we discussed, and also um, changes the template to match what, as we discussed in that call. Uh, <coughs> Georg and I have been, he's been helping me fix the tiny little flaws that I've been uh, missing in there. Um, so if we want, I'd uh, like you, if anybody has any other outstanding like um, suggestions, things I've missed. Um, I know that Matt G said that he would update the template in the metrics repo. Um, I see that the most recent update was from two weeks ago. Is this, is this, is this the correct version, Georg, that's in here right now? So, at this link. Get the link real quick. Yeah. Um, let's see. This is. There is a pull request to change um, information there. We have a um, goal at the top and should be question. Mm -hmm. And I also had put in there the. Um, success metrics, we wanted to remove that. Mm -hmm. so let me merge that pull request real quick. Mm -hmm. um, wait, there it is. And as far as the template in the evolution, uh, the template I put in the, uh, the pull request, I went off of the um, the one that was uh, in the Google Doc that we talked about, as opposed to this one, because I saw that the, the goal and the question was different. Um, I presume that the one that we talked about would probably be the correct one, and given that Matt also said he needed to update it. Your voice okay. is little I merged the pull request, so now it should be final. Yep, I see it. Perfect. Um, do you want me to just copy this verbatim into that that metrics or the question template.md? That's what I recommend. Okay, I will do that. Can I do that on the? I wonder if I can. Um, let's see. All right. All right. I just uh, dropped it in there um, and made a new commit. So that should be completely up to date. With, uh, with the one that's in Chaos Metrics. Um, is there anything else, Georg, or any, anybody else that you can think of that you can see in here? Um, it doesn't actually change any of the metrics content. I know I've, I've put this in the description of the pull request. Uh, it just moves some files around to the uh, focus series we discussed. Oh, is it giving me a... Oh, I've got to sign my commit off, don't I? Oh dear. Well, 
me get the, the DC of the pass really quick. The uh, the DCO should pass on that pull request now. Since I did it from the the web page, it didn't. Um, any objections to merging it? I think that is a no. <laughs> Sorry, Carter, I'll what do you no. want? To Oh, 250? Uh, 246. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I think we're good. Okay. Cool. So that's that one taken care of. Good stuff. Um, and then one of the other things that we talked about uh, last week on the call was here, let me put this link in here as well. Um, so doing as kind of a, a uh, proof of concept, I think, of the new template uh, was uh, changing the code changes metric uh, definition um, to follow the new template. And so that pull request that I just posted in there, number 250, um, does that. Um, and there are a couple things that, uh, a couple of questions or comments that I made on the pull request as well. I know, Gary, that you saw them. Um, about how I did it. Um, should we discuss this some more? Should we just like kind of keep iterating on it? Um, namely, the two things that I was thinking about. So uh, under the new um, the new template, um, there are some uh, headings that didn't. There are some headings from the old definition that didn't exactly match up. Uh, to the new ones that I could exactly see. So um, I left them, I think I left them in there. Um, Can I propose something, Carter? Yeah. Would you mind sharing your screen? Yes, absolutely not. It makes it easier for us to follow along as you're explaining. Yep. All right. Can you guys see that okay? Yeah. Um, so namely, uh, so basically what I tried to do was copy it over all of basically just copy into a blank file the new template and then just take stuff straight from here and drop it in here. Um, there were a couple things, uh, namely the parameters and the specific section. Um, I didn't know, since there weren't exactly equivalent headings, I just threw them under implementation um, down here with the specific description, the get parameters, um, that sort of stuff. I think there did I get everything? Um, so, you got a lot. Yeah, uh, I think I might have. Did I miss the parameters? I think I, I think missed. Something. missing now. I don't see it anymore. Yeah, I think <coughs> I missed those. So I will make a note to fix that to get that in there. Um, that was a. That was entirely a. I forgot. Not a. I meant to drop it out. Um, I just missed that when I was doing it. Um, so one thing I was thinking about is should we have um, like these additional subheadings, like the specific description of Git and the specific Git parameters um, under the new template. And um, my thinking was that it probably would help for the most part for readability, but if there become too many, then the original like structure of the template um, kind of gets lost. And it's, it's almost like if you just allow as many subheadings as you want, what's the point of having a template if, it's, if every metric is going to be wildly different with all the different, different pieces it has? Um, so the, the reason for those uh, subheadings is to organize the information specific for the implementation. Because in, in, in some of the metrics, you need to detail how to do the staff, and that's dependent on the different system that you are tracking. So for instance, that, that's more apparent in back reports because back reports for GitHub or for GitLab or for Baxilla are way different. Mm -hmm. So that you need to map the metrics somehow for them. 
in, in this case, Git is probably the most interesting um, uh, implementation, but still, you need right. to put it in some work. I agree that may, that may be confusion if you are only looking for the description of the, let's say, high level description of the metric. Mm -hmm. So, um, if, if you think that that's confusion, maybe we can either put that at the end of the template or maybe put in a separate file, mm -hmm. something like implementation details. The problem usually is that once you scratch the surface, some issues start to appear, and for that you need the details. So that if mm -hmm. you are going to implement the metric, for instance, you need that. If you only mm -hmm. need to understand it at a, at, a, at a high level, I completely agree that you don't need all those details. So it, I think it's a matter of, of presentation. So I'm happy with any solution that you may only, that you may like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that bring up an excellent point, Jesus, that having a specific implementation of it inside the, the the metric just i i like having them together just because it, it helps you get more of an idea of the like what the, the high level overview is talking about um i'm not particularly married to either having it in the same file or the separate file um just so long i think as we all agree on it um and that we stick to it i think that'll be okay um um, what I what I propose is that we just try it out a little bit. So I open the Google Doc, I copy the file that you created mm -hmm. in there, and then we can um, just see which shoe fits. Okay. Oh, it didn't. Of course, it didn't put it blanks. Um, I'm okay with that. Should we do that right now? Yeah, let's do yeah. it right now. All right. That way we have uh, something we can um, put back into the pull request and then merge. Mm -hmm. So I know you said there were a few things missing here that you wanted to add back. Yes, I will do that. Um, where did it go? I believe it was the this section. Oh, is it gonna? Oh, it's probably gonna be funny about that, isn't it? Let me see. Yep. All right. I'm not sure. I think I thought I thought it was these that I missed, but the these two things or no. <clears throat> I'll figure that out. So it's a question for on that one? Um, I, I, there was something that I thought I missed, uh, in copying over, uh, the, template? the, the stuff from, into the new template, but I can't, I'm trying to figure out which one it was. Was it the specific description? I think Matt and Kevin will audit us <laughs> if we got something wrong. I, I know the parameters were missing, but I don't know if something else was missing. I see the parameters here. No, but those are Git parameters. But then there are general parameters. I uh, think at the very beginning. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. These parameters. You are right. Yeah. Yes. I don't know if there is something else, but that's that's the one that I noticed. There we go. Um, okay. So putting the parameters. 
So, so just now I'm moving sections around so that they match the template we have. Okay. Um, so the specific description for Git aggregators. Okay, so these are all over your implementation. And I'm, I'm on. So I feel like the uh, these parameters would probably fit under the implementation section. The, the, the general idea of the parameters is that you need them to interpret the metric. So for instance, in this case, we need a period of time. But that's right. not directly related to the implementation, but to in the interpretation of the metric. But I don't know if in, the, in the new template how they better fit. I don't know if that could be a sub hidden on the description or a hidden by themselves, or, or maybe even writing them in the implementation because maybe you can understand the metric without that. The, the mm -hmm. problem is that for, for one like this one, if you just look at code changes and nothing else, you may think about total number of code changes over in the repository or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the metric is only relevant when you measure that over a period of time, because obviously you cannot compare 10 years with one month of code changes. Mm -hmm. So, and that was the reason why we had that separate uh, uh, heating for that. But, but I don't know, maybe it could be a sub in implementation or a sub in description, or I don't know. If it's if it's not explicitly connected to the implementation, I think it probably fits better in the description. I agree, Kevin. Do that. So something like this. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine with me. Okay. I think that was. I think that was everything else. That was everything. Uh, I think it was just that that I missed. Um, Okay, so uh, are you finished with, uh, moving stuff here? I don't want to keep jumping around um, over you. So I want to avoid adding a subheading here. Do you mind if I convert parameters just to a bolded? I don't know. That's bold. a really good idea. Mm -hmm. It's still it a heading, but. Mm -hmm. it, violates the template less. Mm -hmm. <laughs> should we make this then like a bullet point or should we just leave them in separate lines? Oh, yeah, I like that. So then, okay, so I know the, which one of these were, so I'm looking at the implementation parts here. Um, which one of these were ones that uh, are in these templates. I think it's filters, visualizations, tools. I don't think aggregators was one of them. So should we turn that into another one of those subheadings? Pardon me. It's just like a bolded word. Should um, we have like a little bit more flexibility? The, in this the, the, the idea of the aggregator is that you have a basic oh. metric like changes, mm -hmm. but usually you don't want the, the, the metric by itself, but you want to aggregate it somehow. So mm -hmm. for instance, in this case, you want the total number. In some other case, you want the median or, or, the, or the mean or whatever. And, uh, and that's the reason for it, but. Mm -hmm. So how about we just put it under implementation like what I'm proposing there? So that's fine. As long as the information is there, I don't care too much. I, I, I understand that my, my approach is usually very much from the implementation point of view. So if you feel it is, fits better in some other way, or just including this in implementation, that's fine with me. Yeah, I think saying, hey, this is an implementation as a count of total number of changes during the period. And then we specify that you can add filters and visualizations. Mm -hmm. um, filters, filters and visualizations are there because when you are implementing, usually you need to know which kind of filters you want to apply, for instance, so that you need an extra field for having it available when you write the visualization, for instance, later. So that's yeah. the main reason for it. What about we put the parameters there um, down with the implementation instead of in the description? How about that, this? So how about you make it better? So, that way we keep the description at the top easy for people to understand. Mm -hmm. And then the implementation is where you would actually come and say, like, this is what you would need to, to actually implement it. 
But in any case, all of these aggregators, parameters, filters, etc., is something that applies to most of the metrics, but people usually didn't put a reflection on that up to now. I mean, in other working groups, you don't find that kind of information. So I don't know if it would be interesting having in the, um, a template somewhere, maybe under implementation, so that people may realize that you think about that at some point, maybe not in the first release. But if you don't have that kind of a staff, uh, it, it's very difficult to have common implementations of the metric. Mm -hmm. I mean, OMAD's been driving the definitions of the metrics towards a more general mm -hmm. structure with less information in the metric itself so that they're easier to develop yeah. and uh, stronger reference to the tools that implement them. That's, that's kind of the way that the group has been going lately. Um, mm -hmm. If anyone else wants to reflect on that, then some of the more recent discussions. Not saying one thing or another, just sharing a recent history. I think that the that, that direction of having it be, be more general is I think I I like it. I think it's it's good because it does put more of that emphasis on the tools and um, how they exist out already being implemented. Um, but I also feel like this information, this like more formal definition of an implementation, like with the aggregators and the parameters um, and the stuff that's a bit more specific to evolution, I also feel like that's, I do like that information as well. Um, and so maybe to that end, maybe it would be more worthwhile to have like a, here's the, the chaos metric template. We define the metrics this way, you know, with just the, just the stuff that's in the, um, that's in that template, like not even these aggregators and parameters separating. It's like as pretty much as general as we can get it. And then we can have, um, of course, this is more work to maintain, but then maybe a, a separate a separate file somewhere else that's like a more evolution specific description of the metric that has some of these things. Um, of course, then the problem there become that raises the problem of maintaining clarity between the evolution, like the specific definition and like the definition that tries to be more general, which probably would create a lot of headache. And I don't know if that's a something we want to tackle. Um, yeah, I agree that we should keep it simple and together. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that as well. So maybe that's to say, we try to, we tend to, maybe we tend to just try to tend to make them as general as possible and not be too specific. But if there are things, like if there are parameters here that we really feel like your definition of the metric is really incomplete without them, then we, can, then we include them. Um, yeah, I think okay. including additional detail in a particular metric is, I think that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I think actually Matt has recognized that that might happen. It's mm -hmm. whether or not we feel the obligation to fulfill, fill out that information for every metric. But, you know, so there's a difference between deciding to add it to a metric. Can, that, can you say that again, Sean? So it's, a, it's, a, it's a difference between adding that metric and making it a template. So if we add the information to particular metrics because we think it's important, I don't think that's prohibited by the template. I think I think what was happening before is there were a lot of required sections in the template that didn't always apply or have a lot of relevant reference. And mm -hmm. so we ended up with a lot of redundant information so that people could feel like they filled out the template. And I think mm -hmm. that's what Matt's trying to avoid, Matt and Kevin. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense to me. I mean, as far as the rest of this stuff goes, um, tools, uh, and stuff. Also, I left this git dm thing in here. It, it just links to like a generic page. I left it in here. I didn't know if this link was still good or not. I mean, it goes to a valid web address, but I didn't want to delete it just in case. But that's probably uh, something that we inherited because at some point we were only mentioning the tools Mm -hmm. And then at some point we started to define how the tools were defining the metric. 
So probably this is something inherited from when we were just saying Git DM is implementing this and nothing else. Mm -hmm. So we can either remove it or whatever you may want. So I don't mind. Um, I think it would be fine to keep it um, because I know that part of this, the keeping it general is the tools. You want to put it into some of the tools. Um, but this doesn't go. I, one of the other things I, I remember mentioning um, or we talked about last week was that uh, if there exists a link to specific, like specifically to the exact implementation of the metric, like to API docs, um, that it can do that. Um, then we would, would want to provide those um, so people didn't have to go, oh, it's a little bit money. Um, wouldn't have to go search for it, and we could just like link them directly to the API docs. Um, should we try to find that for this as well, or should we just leave it in here? Um, I don't think it was like a necessary, like every Link to the, every link that you put for a reference tool has to have like a link to the exact documentation. But um, if anybody knows where it exists on Git DM, it probably would be helpful. Um, yeah, I think it's fine as it is. Okay, works for me. Um, and then so, so yeah, it looks really good to me. The metric with the new template, I like it. Um. So in the same vein, uh, looking down here at the data collection part. Um, I have a question. Go ahead. Yeah. The so. question at the top says, what changes? That's substance. And then our aggregators count. Should we change the question to how many? The, the idea is that the general, um, well, it, it's probably a problem with the metric because metrics are just a number. But the idea was to have something that we are going to deal with, in this case changes, and then you can aggregate it in different ways. For instance, in this case, by counting. But the interesting information in the end is what changes you have. You can just count them, or you can go deeper with them if you want. The usual aggregator is just counting them. So in, in fact, that, that, that means, or, or that depends on how you want to, how precise you want to be with the, with the question. I mean, the usual question is just how many changes you have. And that's, in that case, the metric is the number, and that's it. But you can, you can imagine that you, that you want to drill deeper into that uh, uh, metric, and you want to also to know how many changes you have longer than something, for instance. So if, if you prefer to simplify, we can change the question. If you prefer to make it broad, maybe it's better as it is now. I don't have a specific preference. I just notice yeah, the difference here. My, my impression is that, that we should be consistent and either have broad definitions or more specific, but maybe more understandable um, uh, questions uh, in all the metrics. And uh, I really don't care which one because um, I understand that both are um, both are relevant. And uh, maybe since we are now calling them metrics, we should stick to metrics and numbers usually. And in that case, it could be like you say, Georg, it should be uh, how many? What do others think? It's in any case, it's something that happens a lot when you're talking about metrics. Usually you have the, the issue. The, the, the item that you are counting or that you are aggregating somehow, and then you have the number. And the number is the result of aggregating something on a set of something. In this case, the set is uh, code changes, and the way you aggregate is counting. In the case of bug reports, for instance, you may have bug reports, and you have time for, to, uh, to finish a, a bug report, and then the aggregator may be the median for that. So that's, that's why this is a bit weird. I think I'm in favor of changing it to uh, how many changes um, because uh, you've got the, the focus area's name is activity. And to me, the activity is the type and the frequency, um, like the frequency part of that, of the goal, um, is what to me, I think, lends it more to this is counting the, the amount of activity, like how many of them were there. Um, Based on that, I would propose changing it to how many. Um, but I also think that 
to Jesus's point to um, keeping it general and then allowing for more specific aggregators like the count or the median or like standard deviation or whatever. Um, that 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 also provides a more general uh, a more general view of it, which I know is something that we are we are trying to to keep keep going forward. If that makes sense. I think we can move on from this now. I mean, I think why don't we just do it the way that we've been discussing? Okay. So we just need uh, it. That for the other one, for code changes lines, we have what is the sum of the number, which is in a specific number. So uh, I think that if we to uh, be consistent with that, this one should be how many? If we don't do that, we should change the other one too, to be more general, because it's, it's basically the same issue. Mm -hmm. So maybe the, the most important thing is to write how many here and forget about it, and, and, and try to have the metrics stick to a single number. I'm, I'm cool with that. Yeah. All good? Yep. All right. Sounds good. Um, down here, Gary, at the bottom, uh, with the specific descriptions, um, should we make these into the? Oops, I need to do that. Um, the subheadings as well, like here, just to be consistent. Or should we leave these as the, you know, their their headings as well? Uh, with the markdown. Yeah, let's make them bolded. All right. Well, that's all I have to do. Um, should we try to make some sort of indication that this is a Um, that the get parameters are related to the specific description, like there's some sort of, I don't know, because right now these, it looks like these are two equally leveled headings. Um, where, and I think the, the conceptually, like this is a subheading of the specific description. Yeah, I agree. So maybe we just do, for the parameters. And then maybe this is just italicized or something. So I said spell it right. For RAM. For RAM. There we go. Uh, maybe we can do something like that. Just an idea. Or this could just be its own line. Uh, we could also, um, oops. We could use the the lines that uh, Markdown provides to say that these are like we would have this, and then if there was another data collection strategy, maybe for um, like subversion, some other form of version control would be another line of it. Some other headers stuff um, that could be an option. Does anybody no, have any ideas? No, I don't like the idea of inserting lines. Okay. Adding too much um, formatting here. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm okay with this. The markdown for um, italics, is it? Uh, I think it's underscore. Okay. Yep. Right right double underscore. I think it's two. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Okay, let's, let's move it over. All right. Copy all of this. All right. Let's change to the bottom. There we go. Oh, wait, this is the wrong one. I think I put it in. 
So this um, pull request 250 has a few other things as well in it. Um, I think that's because I, I should have done it from a separate branch. So these actually, this release metrics in the focus areas, uh, that actually was a commit that was in the pull request that we just merged. Um, I think it's probably going to overwrite the change. So yeah. how about we just create a new pull request? Let's, let's do that. Yeah, because if you have two pull requests from the same branch, then yeah. both pull requests are identical. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish there was a easier way to update your repo. Yeah, me too. Weird. You might want to add a line at the bottom um, or below each heading, one mm -hmm. line below each heading. Oh, wait, did we want these, the aggregators and parameters to be bolded? I think we yeah. said we did. Wait, yes, we did? I, I don't know. Yes, they are in our Google Doc. Okay. And then you're saying add a... Uh, like a line here? No, just this uh, empty line. Oh, after each heading? Yeah. Oops. Yeah, especially um, if you go down at the bottom, there where we just have the bolded specific description. That's mm -hmm. the one where I feared that they would run together into one line. Mm -hmm. Uh, oops. Let's see how it works really quick. Oh. Uh, um, I just want to make sure that there's not going to be weird things we can check here. Mutation, aggregators, parameters, filters, visualizations, tools. So description. I think this is good to me. Uh, should I take out these breaks down here? Yeah, I don't know what they're for. Me either. Is there one on the last? I don't know what all those spaces are between for and deciding. Between. What is it, line seven for you? Oh, up here. Oh, 58, yeah. No, at yeah. the end, where it says for deciding. Oh, I didn't see that. Yes, I have relative line numbers on. That's probably confusing. Sorry about that. Yes. OK, so that should make it. There you go. The breaks are gone. Um, that looks okay. Like that. Okay. I think this looks okay. Are you guys cool with this? Should yeah. I go and commit? All right. Offers you to compare. Yep. I love it. Me love too. It's so nice. 
It's got these two variables. That's somewhat annoying. Uh, yeah, that should be the only change to this one file. I think it just made this one. Uh, so that's a good one. Uh, should we wait for the this to pass? So just go ahead and close it. Should we go ahead and merge it? I think so. All right. Mm -hmm. it. All right. Cool. Okay. Love you guys through that. I think that's helped a lot with. Well, going forward, we'll have it much better. But I'll try to write up some of the, the things that we talked about as far as like organizing um, and using the, the bolded words and subheadings um, for the for when we start converting the other metrics. Um, now that we've gotten through the code changes, where we've kind of worked through it together, um, I can go ahead and start working on changing some of the other metrics over. Um, if we want to go ahead and start doing that. Um, I'll probably start with the metrics that have already been released. Um, if there, unless there are any objections to that. That's fine with me. Thank yeah. you. That's great. So some other stuff in the YouTube, I know that took a significant amount of time, but I'm totally okay with that. I think it was a, it was good for us to go through that. Um, so uh, I took a little bit of time last week also to just look through some metrics. I know we also wanted to start thinking about new metrics to release um, for ChaosCon Europe in the end of January. Um, and so for that end, I identified a just a couple metrics in Augur um, that I thought would be, uh, could be potential candidates, just ones that I thought were particularly uh, interesting or ones that uh, I just thought could be, could, could have potential. Um, we don't have to go through them right now. Um, we can if we want to. Um, I put some links to the documentation here. Um, I know. I don't know how exactly how far I'd be able to get as far as the findings. And if, if it would be more useful, I can try to sit down and um, like the findings formally first in the template, and then we can talk about them. Um, actually, that probably would be better now that I think about it, rather than sitting and doing it together. Um, thoughts? Can I just do that and then we'll talk about it next time? I think just continuing to develop the metrics that we've laid out, mapping our tools to those metrics is our principal activity right now. I think there are some new metrics that we've talked about defining. Mm -hmm. And are those are those listed somewhere? Really? Can you say that again, Sean? Are the are the metrics we've talked about developing for the next release, are those listed somewhere clearly? Um like the ones that we want to, like the new ones? The new ones we want to release in, in December uh, or January, whatever it's end up being. I don't think there's like a formal list of 
Well, there is, okay, so there is that. Um, Here, I'll pull it up real quick. Yeah, are you pulling up the spreadsheet that Matt made? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's the it. same spreadsheet from last time. Here, I'll post it in the minutes. Release sheet for tracking metrics. Uh, this still has the web development, all these methods. Uh, so I think this is the this is basically the working list that we're going to build the list that we're going to release. Yeah, so we're going to release so I can also I can, uh, I'll go through here uh, if we're ready uh, to make those new focus areas and then split up the code development ones using the reflective focus area. Uh, I'll, I'll leave this organization uh, probably down at the bottom and put it out looks like this is temporary. So I'm going to lose those. Um, I don't want to get, get rid of them until we're 100% certain. I'm having a hard time. Hearing you, Carter. Yeah. It's it's almost like you're under. Yeah, your microphone is uh, not so great. Okay. You need to get so, a different microphone to run these calls. All right. Is it listening to the correct microphone? It's probably not. Is this better? Much. Okay. I think it somehow it must have switched to my laptop microphone instead of this one. Okay. Is it okay? Um, do I need Do I need to repeat all of that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I had no idea. Um, that's really weird that I did that. Anyways, um, so I can go through and um, move all of these release metrics into the new focus areas that we talked about, the code development activity, efficiency, quality, and then the issue resolution. Um, so that we have those for release. Um, and then um, I know that we talked about having some of these metrics also being in the new release, but also identifying ones that hadn't been um, like formally listed in evolution, um, possibly be candidates for release, like ones that existed in tools, but not, um, but yeah. not in the repository. Um, should we add those to this list, to this list? Should we, um, I made a little, a little table here. Um, this, uh, oops, didn't mean to do that. Um, for ones that were like, I think this would be good for detailing. This don't, this don't necessarily, these aren't necessarily ones that I think we should release, but more ones that I'm like, oh, I'd like to sit down and, and work so, uh, some more on these. Um, would it be more helpful to leave these in, leave all of the, the newer ones in here and then move them over to the sheet once they've been defined? Um, I think so. I don't think we're going to move them to the sheet until they Okay. So I think actually having the list complete in the sheet is a better way for us to track progress towards getting them towards release. So even if we don't release them, we at least include in the list in the spreadsheet. Well, okay. My concern is that list can get fairly and hard to manage if you just create a list of all of them. I'm not against it. I'm just going to state that is the only concern that I have. Yeah, but especially if Carter is planning to work on them, it, I, to me, it makes sense to have it tracked in the spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we could do a, maybe, hmm. Maybe we could have almost like a like a work in progress section down here. That's like a we're working on these. We want to release them, and we want to have all of them in the same place. But they're not ready to be considered, like the ones that I might be still be working on. Um, that way, we don't pollute these lists with stuff that's in progress, but we do keep them all in one place. 
Would that make you feel, would that ease some of your fears, Sean? Sure. Okay. So I'm going to do progress. Um, I don't know how to format it. I feel like I should know more about Google Sheets. Um, let's just do this. Color. Um, I'll fix that later <laughs> so it matches. Um, but yeah, if you, um, if any of you guys think of particular metrics like in Grimoire Lab or in Augur or just that you think of, um, like maybe ones in the repo that haven't been detailed, um, feel free to throw them, I guess now in this list. Um, I'll make sure, I also will make sure that this gets into the meeting notes in the repository so we have more stable access to it. And actually, um, yeah, we've got it in the, in the Garrick posted already. Um, so I can, um, I will make a point to try to work on some of these before the next meeting. Um, I don't know why he keeps doing that. And then we could uh, talk more about them. Um, another thing I wanted to just um, ask you, Georg, do we need to start thinking about metrics for the chaos report yet? Is, is that should we just start thinking about it? Do we need to start compiling them? What's the, I know you've been involved with that. You're talking about the Sephir and Jenkins? Yes. Um, we can hold off on that. One okay. Now. Okay. That's probably better for now. Um, I just wanted to, to see if that was something that we needed to get on. I don't want to hold anybody back. Are we going to work? I assume we'll probably just work from just our release metrics for that. So. That would make sense to me. Um, and then I know we've been working off of the three new focus areas and issue resolution. Um, we have, we've had community growth be defined in, uh, it's still defined as a focus area. Um, there's not a link to it here, but it does, this markdown file does exist. Um, is this something that we want to keep as a focus area. Um, I'm realizing this discussion probably will not be over in six minutes, um, or the, that we won't finish that a discussion like that. Um, should we put a pin in it to talk about it for next time? Should we just worry about the other ones for for now and then get to this one later? Um, does anybody have any particularly strong feelings, or we just get to it when we get to it? I think we have enough. Um to work on right now. So let's move ahead to those action items. And then when we have, when someone has a strong opinion about advancing community growth, we can start working on that. Okay. I, I like that answer. <laughs> I'm fine with that. It's uh, less to handle. I agree. We'll focus on the getting the new template out and then we can start working on the other stuff. Um, that sounds good to me. Um, I think that's most of um, that. Well, most of it. that is everything that I had on the agenda for today, and I know we're right of, at right about time. Um, is there anything else um, anybody could think of that they'd like to discuss? Um, I think um, one thing I'll mention to the people on the call is that we are looking for a co-leader or co-coordinator for this working group. So if there's anybody that has the time or the, the gift to assist you in shepherding this group. I that would be welcome. Mm -hmm. so just throw that out there. Talk to your friends, your family, your neighbors. <laughs> um, I agree. Sean. Like, like, what are you looking for at, at this moment, uh, Sean? Well, I think you know, in the at the beginning, Jesus and I coordinated this, and Jesus did a fantastic job of getting us going and, and getting the initial release finished. And I was, I was there. And I think having a couple of people who work together to coordinate does make it easier uh, to sort of balance the load and have someone else sort of in real time peer reviewing what we're going to talk about in these meetings and um, kind of keeping us focused in our task. So I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a giant commitment, but it's probably, I would say three to five hours a week would be my guess. Mm -hmm as we move towards release. 
Okay. Possibly less than that, but mm -hmm. I don't want to underestimate it. Mm -hmm. Um, I also would like to stress it's not like a. I can I can do it by myself. Um, it would be nice to have help, but I don't want people to feel like uh, they're like they have to help. Um, this part of the semester is kind of crazy for me with school right now, but it's not unmanageable. Um, and I made a commitment to to do this, and I'm going to see it through. Um, but yeah, if anybody's interested, or if you know anybody who's interested, we'd Love to have some help. Uh, I would like to say I don't want to I don't want to volunteer anyone because I know everyone's busy. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, from a, uh, I think because the this work group is so tooling dependent, uh, it would be really nice if if we had uh, a coordinator from uh, Biturgia and a coordinator from from Augur to kind of. Uh, balance out the two the two software groups. I agree. Just my thought, but but I know everyone ever at Biturgy is super busy. So and uh, I don't know I don't know if anyone there wants to volunteer. So I have, I'll leave a, it at that. I have another. Um, so so it worked really well having Jesus and Sean as you know from both camps, and it would be nice to have that again to make this happen it would be beneficial to change the time of the meeting because right now, oh no, wait. No, I'm thinking about uh, the the Augur meeting. The Augur meeting is late at night. No, for this one there, um, um, I know Manrique is planning to attend regularly. Um, in, in any case, um, I, I can talk for some of the people in, in Vitoria that they're, they're usually not used to uh, asynchronous communication, which means uh, that the way of working in this group is a bit difficult for some of them. Uh, that the more developer oriented they are, the more difficult to work in meetings. In general, I mean that that's maybe the the um, I don't know the culture of the company or or, or the culture of the of the software projects. So uh, I know because I've tried somebody like Valerio, for instance, to involve him and so on, and he tried. But uh, the, the way they usually work is much, much more asynchronous with very few meetings, and the meetings are usually just for deciding, not for, for actually working. Just, I'm just saying, because I know that's a problem, and I know that you people in Augur work in a different way. So um, in any case, I'm, I'm going to work to talk again to some people in Victoria. I would, li I would love to help, but I'm Things. Unfortunately, my time is very tight now. I yeah, cannot. but I'm going to try, um, Georg. Maybe we can try, we can uh, raise this issue and with engineering people in Victoria and see where somebody can. Yep. Join That's them now. Thank you, Jesus. I think that, that your point is a good point. That this group has done a lot of work uh, asynchronously, and the mm -hmm. calls have been less, less attended. So, I think uh, one of the things we can do better is. Make sure that we send updates to the mailing list. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I do need to make sure I'm doing a better job of that. I do recognize that. Or send them that for the meeting newsletter. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, looks <laughs> like we're at right about time. So, so um, yeah, so I'll I'll do. make sure to upload these. And thanks for all your help today, today guys. Appreciate it. I'm glad right. we got through that stuff. Um, yeah. Thanks, yeah. Have a good one, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.